rebuild communities, rescue the planet, recover economies. Above all, restore hope. Welcome back to another edition of this program, Quest for Peace. And today we'll be looking into a statement. And this statement says that, since war began in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed. And here on our platform, we have Mr. Um, Kajok Theodore, we have Ms. Chesford Josephine, and we have Ms. Chidera Immaculate. They'll be here to emphasize on this statement, to explain to us what this statement is all about. But before we get to the statement, I have a question I'll ask to them, and I'll start with you, Ms. Josephine. What do you understand by the word peace? Okay, thank you very much. To me, to a layman, he will see peace, or he or she will see peace as the absence of war. Yeah, but that's not what peace necessarily is. Peace could also be the absence of um, total violence. It could also be the absence of disturbance. It could also be a quiet and a quiet and calm, a quiet and calm state of mind. To me, that is how I see peace. All right, thank you very much. You see peace as a state of quietness, calm. calmness within oneself. All right, thank you very much. And over to you, Mr. Theodore. Peace. Now, I want to get your own opinion on that word peace. What do you understand by the word peace? Thank you very much for asking that question. So, for my own understanding, peace is simply a state of stability where there is no form of violence in a country. Peace does not literally mean the absence of war because we also have ideological conflict. But a state where there is no ideological conflict, there is no form of violence, as in everywhere is so calm, that's just, that's just the way I Okay, see that's what you understand by peace. A state of calmness, calmness in a society and within an individual. All right, thank you very much. Um, I'll, the same question will go to you, Miss Chidera. What do you understand by that word peace? You see, they have explained. He has explained what he understands by the word peace. She has explained what she understands by the word peace. So, to you, to your own understanding, what do you mean or what do you understand by that word peace? Thank you so much for this opportunity for asking my opinion. One I think about peace is peace is just the absence of disturbance. It's a period of calmness and tranquility. And when we talk about peace, we're talking about the, both the internal and external factors, like the internal and external peace. When we talk about the internal peace, we're talking about the peace within you. That's within my, an individual. Yeah, my peace of mind. Okay. Like we normally say, my peace of mind. When we talk about having peace of mind, we're talking about a state we, a state where we are not disturbed, a state where we are calm, we are happy, like everything is going as yeah. planned. That's peace. Then when we talk about external peace, we come with our relations, with the way we relate to others. Other in society. Yes, our relations how we interact and everything and our interaction includes um, calmness, stability, no disturbance and the absence of value. All right, uh, thank you very much. So to conclude what you guys have said on peace, I think you guys are simply saying peace is a state of calmness within an individual and within a society, right? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. And I have another question here for you guys. I really want to... <laughs> I know if you hear the question, you'll be like, wow, I'm talking about peace, I'm talking about war. Yeah, because I believe where there is peace, there is no war. Yes, Meaning in the absence of peace, we have war. And in the absence of war, what we have is peace. So they are like brothers. But uh, I don't know if I should call them stepbrothers. Or <laughs> <laughs> because when there is no war, there is peace. And when there is uh, no peace, there is war. So the next question is war. So let me start with you. Mr. Theodore, what do you understand by the word war? Wow, thank you for that. The, like the way it sounds, war, to me, is a state of armed state of armed conflict. Okay. You understand? Between two conflict parties or within the country or groups. That to me is war. As in 
there's no calmness they are all forms of violence human rights violations and the the the, the records of casualties are just so many when it comes to war so that's my own definition of okay if well if i can recover where you said in when you were finding peace you said it's a state of calmness and meaning when we talk about war I mean there's no calmness Right, thank you very much. And I will still ask the same question to you, Miss Chidera Immaculate. You know, this word war is just three letters, right? Mm. Like just the rebirth. It's so heavy, like mm. it's it's heavy. Even when I'm pronouncing it, oh, <laughs> it's, it's really heavy. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah, it's scary, right? But it's, it's easy to spell, just three letter words. War, but that war, <laughs> what you can do is so what what do you understand by that word war? To me, what I think war is, uh, war is a clash of ideology. That's a uh, clash of ideology between two persons. Okay, let's use an example between both of us. Okay, okay. The the faculty gala is coming. All right, it's on Wednesday. Okay, okay. We have the faculty gala on Wednesday, and you propose the both of us sit on the table, and I don't want it. Mm, no, the table is costly. No, I don't buy your idea. And you say no, we need to sit. Oh, no, and I refuse. That's an ideology that has been disturbed. It's been clashed. The both of us have not come to an agreement. And with that, with that, with that tension, with the tension, we might end up not being in good terms just because I have what I wanted and you have yours. Yeah. Yeah, you bring, you bring something like war. You know, we are all human yes. beings, but we have the, the we have things we like and things we dislike. Maybe what you like is what I don't like, mm -hmm. and what I like is what you hate. Uh -huh. And, and in my little war, yes, yes, that's when the ideology comes in. Of it comes in. And also, war could be within and in bigger. That's what we call dilemma. Dilemma. Yes. Wow. Okay. Dilemma. That's I'm 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 having conflict within myself. I'm not stable. And when you see, when we talk about war, we talk about tension, we talk about instability, we talk about fear. So, to me, I think war is a horrible period. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I can say. Alright, thank you very much, Miss Chidera. Alright, so the same question will go to you, Miss Chefford Josephine. What do you understand by that three letter word? Like, war. What do you understand by war? Okay, to me, yeah, I've said it all. Just to add my voice to the eyes, it could be the struggle between opposing forces. It could also be, as my colleague said, a state of armed conflict between, it could be between countries, between, I can't really say two or more, yeah, between countries, it could also be between individuals. And as she said, it could also be, what could also be, Differences in ideologies, yeah, ideologies. Two different ideologies can lead to war, can lead to violence too, yeah. So that is just what I can add to what you have said. All right, thank you very much. Uh, what I've understood here is the state of calmness. Well, okay, where you guys talk about this, it says it's a state of calmness, right? Maybe within an individual or in the society. And war when it comes to war is the absence of calmness like it's just the opposite right yes. like i earlier said if there is peace there is no war if there is war there is no peace and in the absence of peace we have war and in the absence of war we have peace all right thank you very much Rebuild communities, rescue the planet, recover economies, above all, restore hope. This UN Forum can help you raise your voices for action. Rebuild communities, rescue the planet, recover economies, above all, restore hope.
right welcome back to the second part of this program and here our audience here with me they are going to be talking on this statement and the statement says since war begin in the minds of men it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed hmm. <clears throat> so let me start with you miss Chidera Immaculate, what do you understand? Since war begins in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed. Huh? The question sounds tough. Yeah. <laughs> Let me give you what I think about it. <clears throat> We usually there's this saying, this nice well, an African proverb, proverb, sorry, or an English proverb. It says, "Your word you give your attention to everything begins in the mind." So if if as an individual who have the ideology of bringing weapons, creating weapons, we have the ideology of causing tension, we have the ideology of bringing pains to others. I think. We also have some people in our society that can help change their ideology. For example, we have um, we have psychologists. <coughs> psychologists, am I right? Yeah. Counselors. Okay. Yeah, we have counselors. I think counselor is a better word to use. We have counselors. Those being addicted to violence. Let me use the word addicted to violence. Yeah. They need the counselors. They need them. They also need a change of environment. I'm used to war, I'm used to fights, I'm used to killing. I just need someone to bring me out of that cage. I need someone to talk to me. So I think what we need in changing our mindset towards peace is we need a counselor. Yes, a counselor that will talk on changing our minds. We also need a change of environment, like removing ourselves from war zones to peaceful zones and yeah it will help it will help our psychology it will help our minds so what you're trying to say here is that since there are some people who are addicted to cause conflict to cause war it begins from their mind and we have other people who can create peace who can bring out um steps in which they can achieve peace like maybe the counselors so are you saying here that they can get uh, rather these people who are very much addicted to uh, violence or to war, you're trying to say that they should go meet counselors or rather counselors should come and meet them and talk to them on how they can construct peace. I don't understand. Can you explain more again? Oh, it's so tough. <laughs> okay. I think the government has much role to play here. I think this is the role of the government right now. Okay, the government, what the government like rehabilitation centers. Yeah, we need them to transform the minds of people who need them. Like, and that's the role of the government. The government has to bring those victims, have to bring those persons, yeah, take them to the rehabilitation centers and bring the, they are the counselors to them. Because I won't, when I'm in that state, I'm, I think what I'm doing is right. I, don't, yeah. I think I don't need a counselor. I think I'm normal. So I need someone at a better position to think for me, to okay. help me out. All right. Thank you very much, Miss Chidera. So the same question will go to you, Miss Josephine. Since war began in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed. So what can you say about this thing? Okay, one thing I want us to understand and know is that the one important part of your body is the mind. Because your mind tells you what to do. Sorry, your brain. So now your mind tells you what to do. It tells you to put food in your mouth. It tells you to pick this. It tells, so it tells you what to do. Okay, same as the mind tells people to create guns, to create weapons, to create anything you know is used to destroy. Anything that is destructive. Let's take for example, I create a bomb. I can use that bomb and destroy people. Do so many things. It's my mind that is telling me that. that yeah. Maybe I can be creating a gun for something else. Look at 
back then a gun was created to kill animals right yeah but now what do they use a gun for to that's the mind people ah. use the gun now to kill people yeah and also i want to talk about the frustration aggression theory like um when i was defining peace i forgot to mention that peace could also be the absence of structural violence an example of structural violence could be hunger let me use the word hunger i have not eaten for days and i see you eating food do you expect me ah, to be happy of course I'll not of be course happy, i'll though. be very aggressive my mind will say just go and beat her off and take the food off take the especially food. when i take the food and you are like refusing to give me i'll be violent I'll, that is i could even beat you up so everything starts in the mind everything starts in the mind also we could look at war it's three letter word w a r w which is weapon a attitude and um r reaction for example wait wait wait, wait. um <laughs> sorry no you know the word you just said that is so interesting it is not, that is not i'm hearing this thing for the very first time in my life w a r as in you're saying here that w can stand for weapon yeah a can stand for attitude, attitude. and arrow can stand for reaction yeah. and this thing leads to war wow yeah. i want to give an example i may be in the kitchen cooking right a knife is used for many purposes i can use a knife to cut tomatoes i can use a knife to slice onions but that's a weapon too it, a knife too is a weapon for example i just see you in the kitchen and the first thing that comes to my mind is i can just use this knife and kill this person just i mean just pierce the person that's my attitude i just that's what is in my mind now attitude comes in i take I don't know reaction. I pierce that person. That's war too. That's okay. war. It just happens like that. So everything starts from the, from mind. the mind. Thank you. Um, I believe this question has two parts. And for me, I will say you've answered just the first part, which is about the war. And the second part says it is in the it is in the mind of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed. Okay. As my colleague rightly said, okay. or earlier said, some people they don't just react because they want to. At times, it's due to a certain scenario that pushes them to act violently. So, as she said, it's more of the role of the government to, you know, to bring in counselors who can talk to these people, educate these people. Yeah, on how they can control peace and also as she said you could maybe change the environment take the person away from that area. maybe the things around the person pushes the person to be causes be the violent. person to be violent so you can just take the person out of that environment so it's more of the government and also more of individuals too if you see someone who is acting violently it's your place to walk up to that person to act act like a counselor to that person so to me that's what i see all right thank you very much so i'll go to you mr theodore the same question goes to you since war began in the minds of men it is in the minds of men of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed so what do you understand that statement that's that's a very interesting statement I must really say, but permit me to repeat it again. Since wars begin in the minds of men, it is in the mind of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed. Yeah. Uh, what I want the viewers out there to understand is this a word has been mentioned there which is mind, which takes place or rather acts in a both negative and a positive aspect. You understand? So if they say since war begins in the mind of men, your mind is very powerful. That I must say. You cannot stop or prevent your mind from thinking about something. But there are still measures or things you can do to remedy the situation. So since war begin in the mind of the men, this statement is just trying to make us understand that it is in the minds of men that the idea of, of war, war starts up from. Okay. It 
what is in their mind they have to first of all think about it then after thinking about it before they carry it out okay. now moving to the second question which says the second part, the second part thank you it's in the mind of men that the defense the defenses of peace must be constructed like my colleague rightly said the roles of counselors it is very important in a society what do counselors do they will build they rebuild your mind they restructure your mind they teach you at times people people are violent it's not because they, they really like to or they really want to be violent at times it's due to the circumstances around them or maybe from where they grew up from some stuff like that so now what are these counselors here to do the fact that you are doing something which is not right which may seem right to you does not make it right, right yeah. you understand so these counselors are here to rebuild your mind to make you understand that the fact that you have this idea of building a bomb does not mean it's good why don't you think of creating an association that preaches peace like what you guys are doing like what we are doing here good this was an someone's idea it started from the mind, from the mind. he was like why don't i start up an association called peace advocate that will preach nothing but peace importance of peace 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 you understand so this this like that's that's why i i started by saying that the the the, the, the topic it's it's it's, it's interesting Understanding it is in the minds of men that war starts or begins. It is still in these minds of men that the defenses of peace can be constructed. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Theodore. Well, from the explanation, you've heard it all. The first part of the statement talks about the mind. And the statement is all about war and peace. Since men start war from their mind, they sit and think of things that can create war. They sit and think of how they can create weapons to destroy another human being. They can still sit and use that same mind of theirs and think of ways that can bring peace, ways in which they can construct peace. So in all, that's what they're trying to say here. All right, thank you very much. And now, uh, We've come to the end of this program, but before you go, I want you guys to give your advice to your fellow youth out there on the disadvantages of war. So let me start with you. Okay. <clears throat> to my youth out there, I wish to advise you guys. Let me use example of what has been trending lately on the internet. I saw a video, I was watching a video of two students uh secondary school students who were involved in a fight that's a boy and a girl it was horrible it was shameful because their mates were there just they want to record they need to record no one was like let me go and call for the discipline master no one was like let me go and call for a higher authority but they just they wanted to record and i think the girl beat up the boy's ears yeah that's rolling very fast so what my advice to you is that let's learn to control our anger and let's know that your opinion should be different from mine and let's accept that and also we should throw some lights to parents let me talk to the parents out there train your child like it's not about do this don't do this wash plates don't wash plates no life is more to that life is more to washing plates Tell them you are not supposed to involve in fights. When you see people fighting, call for a higher authority. When you see people quarreling, call for a higher authority. Learn to abstain yourself from fights. Run from it. And also learn to accept the opinion of others. I think that will help us to reduce the level of casualties. Alright, thank you very much.
Mr. Miss Chidera, sorry. Okay, over to you, Mr. Theodore. What advice can you give to the viewers out there concerning the goal? To those of us, what to those of you watching us, I would like to emphasize on the fact that war is not a good thing. It's a very, very bad thing. It's very bad because during war we have loss of life, property, so many terrible things are being carried out during that process. Peace, I can say, is the best. When it's the best of the best, of peace. Preach peace everywhere you go. Preach peace in your house. Preach peace in the church, in your schools, everywhere. War is not a good thing. So, even when you sit around people trying to, to how can I put it? You sit around people trying to talk or to create conflict. To, yes, to create conflict. Abstain yourself. Or people like that, yeah, of no good. Right. It's to try to advise them, make them see reasons why things should not, violence is not the solution to everything. Negotiation is the best. Negotiation, I repeat, is the best. So, to the viewers out there, to the parents, the mothers, the fathers, youths, peace is the best solution all right thank you very much mr theodore so the last person here we have is miss chefford josephine so what advice can you give to the youth out there when it comes to war okay to me imagine you are to become like god destined you to become the president of let me say of a country yeah and you involve yourself into a war and you die it's horrible right so i just advise it's good we stay out of war we stay out we should not partake in war situation and also war it gives a bad reputation about you as i said if you want to be a president and your companion people realize that you are even the leader of one group like that that's a bad reputation you're giving yeah, about yourself so please let us stay away from war avoid wars anything that looks like violence like war stay away thank you all right thank you very much i'm so happy and trust me i've learned a lot from it i know what is peace i know what is war all right we've come to the end of this program and make sure you and forum can help you raise your voices for action for the past 70 years una uk has been an essential bridge between the un and the people in the united kingdom we welcome your constructive criticisms and your invaluable support for our mission to build a safer, more peaceful, and more sustainable world. I send my best wishes for your success, and I count on all of you to engage with the United Nations at this forum and beyond.